I'm here with uh, Anthony Garrett, a professional acrylic artist. Uh, I'd like to talk to him about the painting that he's, uh, he's finished here. Um, he's used a number of our new additives and mediums on this. Um, so, uh, hello Anthony, you right? Hello Paul. Um, could you just sort of talk me through, uh, you know, your painting process here and how the mediums have helped you to achieve what you wanted to do? Sure, well there's, uh, there are three mediums I've used on this particular painting. The first of which is modelling paste, which I used as a sort of base layer to build up some heavy textures in the, in the foreground. Um, I also mix some of that with paints to, to, to really lift the paints and give it some solid textures. The second one is the flow improver which I use for the sky here yeah. and here. I just added it to the white and I work on the floor so you sort of poured it on and let, let the canvas roll it around. Um, the third of which is the gloss medium here which I apply to the horizon a few areas on the, on the sea here just to lift them. If I'd, for instance, wanted to have worked a bit longer in the horizon and added a bit of detail here, I might have wanted to use some slow drying medium, which would enable me to do that while this had sort of dried, yeah. so I could have worked into that. So there's a variety of textures on there which, which just uh, give it a bit more interest than previously had I not used them. I think perhaps more on this painting than, uh, than some others, uh, I, th you know, I think it's quite evident that you wouldn't have been able to achieve this just with the paint alone, is, is that true no, to sure. say? Or? Well, I think the more tools you've got available, the more flexibility it gives you in terms of contrast. Um, similarly with colour, you know, the more contrast you've got there, the more effective I think the painting. So um, in the same sense, more textures you can fit on the better. Okay, and uh, when you've been using the mediums, uh, you've been using them with the artist's acrylic, um, are you seeing any compromise to the, the colour depth or the colour shift at all? No, not at all. In fact, you know, I've, I've now got the confidence to do it, you know, just pour it on. I, I wouldn't have had that before. I think I would have worried about the, the sort of mixing of the colours and maybe it flowing into other colours, but it's been pretty consistent throughout. And um, even when I'm mixing the, the face, which is really quite heavy, with the paint, you, you apply it and the, the colour consistency is excellent, so it's, um, it's fine. And, and I think you, you sort of touched upon it, were you doing a bit of both in terms of um, putting the model in place down as a neat layer, but also using some colour mixed in with it? Yeah, sure, I, I put it down onto the actual canvas to start with, so just to build it up really, and then um, after that I applied it with the paint and a knife and just sort of scraped it over, see so it, it picked up various areas of old bits of paintings and canvas, but. So you've got sort of two layers of modelling paste there, really. Okay. And are you, have you um, intermixed any of the mediums together, or is that something that you may want to tr start trying now? Or? I haven't done that yet, but it might be something to... I mean, for instance, if I want a gloss flow improver, that might be nice. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit of experimenting to do there, but that might be good. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you see a, a good example there of uh, an artist who's using some of the additives to change the performance of the colour, but also using some of the mediums to change the, the finished painting. Um, those being the modelling paste, slow drying medium, flow improver and gloss medium, all on one painting to achieve a real variety of, uh, sort of striking textures and colours here.